In a previous video, we discovered an algorithm for solving the celebrated equation. And how did we do it? We did it by abandoning the language of matrices, and we solved this equation, which appears so beautiful and so compact in the language of matrix algebra, by interpreting it as a collection of equations, and then manipulating those equations in a familiar way. Well, that's not really necessary. What we're going to do in this video is stick to the matrix notation, and we'll repeat the discovery of our algorithm in the language of matrices. And the point of that is to help you get used to the language of matrices and to be able to do sophisticated manipulations and carry out sophisticated logic in this wonderful language. It is a very great skill to have. So we're going to take all of the same steps so you can have two pictures in your mind and connect them. What we did previously when we interpreted this as a collection of equations and what we're going to do now. An approach in which all elements are considered as whole indivisible objects. So what was the first thing that we did? We moved the right hand side to the left. So let's do the same thing here and end up with this system. AX minus lambda x equals zero. All right, a little bit helpful, maybe not so helpful. What was our next step? To factor out x. And we can almost do it here, except not quite, because if we were to factor out x, we'll have a minus lambda, which makes no sense to subtract a number from a matrix. So the language of matrices fails us at this point. What we have here is a matrix times a vector minus a number times a vector. So when we factor out the vector, we're left with that nonsensical matrix minus number. But we can rescue what's going on. And we rescue what's going on by converting this number times vector artificially to a matrix times vector by sticking in the identity matrix, which of course doesn't change the value but changes what's really going on. This used to be number times vector, but now we have matrix times vector. You can think of this as an artificial step, and yes, it is artificial, but it is very effective. So we now have this equation, and what's nice about this equation is that it's consistent in terms of shape. We have matrix times vector minus matrix. Think of this matrix as lambda times i. It's a matrix with lambdas on the diagonal. I has ones on the diagonal, so lambda I has lambdas on the diagonal. There you go, lambdas on the diagonal, just what we want. Matrix times vector. So now when you factor out X, you have matrix minus matrix inside. And I believe I still have space. So what we'll have inside is A minus lambda I times X equals zero. All right, so now we have a linear system-ish, kind of. It's not quite a linear system because this is not a constant matrix. It still has lambda sitting in it. But in any case, with respect to X, it is a linear system. And we're looking for its null space. And its null space is only interesting, non-trivial, when this matrix is singular. In other words, when its determinant equals zero, just as we discovered before, we're just rediscovering everything in different notation. So we must have a minus lambda i, the determinant of, equals zero the number. And that provides us with a new recipe. And it states, subtract lambda i from a, equate its determinant to zero, find lambda, or lambdas, plug them into this equation, and find the null space of the resulting equation. But if you think about it, it's the exact same algorithm as before, because what does it mean to subtract lambda i from the diagonal? Excuse me, what does it mean to subtract lambda i from the matrix A? Well, it means subtracting lambda from the diagonal of A, from each of the diagonal entries of A, and then finding the determinant of that matrix and equating it to zero. So we've rediscovered the same recipe, but we did it strictly in the language of matrix algebra. And it was much shorter, and we did it with complete control. So the takeaway here is that the language of matrix algebra is extremely powerful, and to the extent possible, 
You should stick to all of the elements in your problem as whole indivisible objects and see how far you can go with them. There is an there is a enormously broad range of problems where that approach works. That's why matrix algebra is so popular and so many people like it. And it certainly works in this case.